here we are. People can see us. Let me see. Oh, audio's working. One of you should say a word. Word. A word. There it word. is. All right. Audio is working. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the show. Uh, we're here to play some Forbidden Lands. Yeah, it's going to be exciting and fires are going to get started and drugs are going to be done and uh songs will be sung it's going to be great just great all around um mm -hmm. anyway we'll go through and do introductions i'm chuck i run defenders of cobalt uh you can find us over on twitch.tv slash defenders of cobalt uh and yeah that's me uh adam uh make some words plug your plugs um tell us who you're playing Hi, I'm Adam Rose. I'm with Grim and Perilous Studios, and I am playing Huxley, a young orc sorcerer. Um, and what I'd like to plug, um, I guess just our website, grimandperilous.com, um, where uh, soon you'll be getting uh, all sorts of news as we uh, post a couple of games that we've been very quiet about. So There you go. Uh, Exciting. Within a couple months, you'll know. Yeah. Uh, hey, thanks for that sub, them, Dave. That's fantastic. Oh, okay, shit. Dave. Ashley just showed up in chat. There goes the neighborhood. Yeah. Oh, snap. Yeah, this yeah. character's going to die now. Yeah, it's probably going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Adam, not Adam. Adam, you already made words. Dan, yeah. Dan, you make words. I will make some words. I'm Dan with the Defenders of Cobalt. I'm playing uh, Steely Dan, who doesn't steal anything. And... Um, I bought some more armor today because last time I didn't have enough armor, even though I have more armor than anybody on the face of the earth. So we'll see how that works out this time. Yeah. <laughs> uh, who's next? Jake. I'm Jake. I am also with the defenders of Cobalt, and I will be playing a, a goblin pyromaniac named Osborne, who also has a hog named Bob. Very cool. Uh, over on the other side, uh, Jeff. Hey, I'm Jeff. I run a group called Adventures in Lolly Gagging. We play various tabletop role playing games on the internet over at twitch.tv slash the Lolly Gaggers. Uh, every other Mondays, we play Alien. Uh, and uh, starting next Friday, we're going to be playing Delta Green. So uh, looking forward to that. Uh, and then we also run a Things from the Flood game here on the Free League Publishing channel, uh, which will be on this coming Monday as well. You can see Chuck. You can see. Dan, you can see Melissa in that game as well. Uh, I am playing uh, Waits, who is a dwarven minstrel uh, of of some age, who uh, until recently was a was a guy looking to you know repent for past deeds. Now he's just a a guy who's looking for death. He he just recently suffered a mental condition, a permanent condition, so he changed his personality. And starting last week, he became a very dark man wearing black clothes it's like the johnny cash like wearing black face and he's just looking at death now as that's kind of all he's doing so that's weights there you go that times for steely dan yeah yeah all right jen hey everybody i'm jen i uh, have a twitch channel called pixel prowler and tonight i'll be playing grace firewalker and introducing my eurasian eagle owl asana there you go. I forget. Yeah, you get a fancy animal companion. So yeah. there you go. Uh, and last but not least is Melissa. I am with Adventures in Lollygagging, um, and I play Bellari, who is a 64-year-old halfling druid. Um, I am holding on to some XP at the moment, so I didn't get anything fancy this time around. Um but she's pretty good at, you know, bringing everybody through the woods and not getting people lost um, and can cook some things decently every now and again. And that's Bellari. Cool. Uh, so kind of to, to recap in the story, you all ended up taking possession of uh, that one place, Weatherstone, which is uh, mouse cursor which is up here on the map. You all, you know, finally it got cleared out. You uh, took it over and you've kind of started making it your stronghold. 
But that doesn't stop the task at hand of uh, trying to figure out what's going on with all these strange elfin rubies and the crown, the Stanengeist, and, you know, just trying to keep it out of the hands of the wrong people while trying to figure out if there is such a thing as the right people. Um, your, your task was to travel over to Pelagia and meet up with the Red Runners there to work on getting one of the other rubies. Uh, I don't remember which one off the top of my head, and I'm not opening the journal entry. Um, and we were supposed to turn over the one that we found. Oh, is that well. what it was? You were supposed to turn over one? I knew it was something to do with one of those yeah. things. The one we got from the king we were supposed to give to them. Okay. Okay, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, but, you know, you cleared out some issues in the hollows. And rather than going straight there, you decided, hey, we're going to go see if we can find anything about the crown. Maybe get ahead of the curve a little bit. Uh, so when you're looking for ancient knowledge on where an old relic might be, you decided to go to a library, uh, specifically the library in the Eye of the Rose. Um, they have a, an ancient kind of elven library there full of, you know, old wisdoms and information that the orcs who dwell there haven't quite figured out how to um, fully comprehend make sense of so yeah you're going to go there you're going to sneak in the back door which leads directly into the library steal your information and then sneak out before anyone finds out that you're there uh the problem was that on your way there you came across a group of orcs who was carrying a another orc that they captured and were returning um our good friend uh huxley went up to talk to them and they figured out like oh huxley is also possibly one of these runaway orcs that we need to capture and uh fight broke out people were injured um dan did get to keep uh his other foot um, this time. and uh you all saved the the you know the orc they were carrying his back uh his name was uh that's the wrong mouse his name that's a weird name for an orc uh his Evolve? name was steve sarga Sorry. you would start with an s yeah um and i actually i went ahead and name. i just dumped him in the hirelings folder they're in the characters thing so if you want to you know see his character sheet it's there um but yeah so you all decided well we need to lick our lick our wounds recover a little bit and then I believe there was some um, some talk of maybe saying if you were, could recruit this orc as another hireling um, to, uh, you know, stick in Weatherstone to help keep the place. If I remember correctly, did I say he was a merchant by trade? Yeah, which I think that could be valuable That's to us. Idea. Yeah, mm -hmm. I need to add that to Somebody this. who can help us keep our stuff supplied. Yeah, that is true uh yeah so he's a merchant uh yeah so we're gonna pick up there you've all made it to um that frosty place uh frost cliff and you're gonna you know heal up a little bit resupply and then probably if i uh predicting the situation correctly head back to eye of the rose to See if you can find the information on the crown and get that before any of the other horrible people out there can get it. Yeah. I guess yeah. I should also mention last time you did find out that in the basement of Weatherstone is some kind of weird ass complex guarded by a Minotaur. Um, and you all, you know, did some talking and maybe made friends with a Minotaur. Yeah. Uh, anything still I missed? Still in the vault. Yeah, still like in the cool vault. Like cool people do. Yeah. Uh, anything I missed? I bet he's still hungry too. He did. I think that's everything. You got some herpes to eat. Yeah. I know, but I mean, I'm sure he's still hungry. <laughs> still a lot of questions. Yes. Any questions? Oh yeah, because Minotaur starved to death. Well, he's been down there for who knows how long, so he's obviously right. finding something to eat. <laughs> yeah, he was like, you can 
You can come into this dungeon so long as I don't see you. Yeah. It's like, don't yes, let me catch you, true. and you have free reign. Which is not really free reign, <laughs> but, you know, in Minotaur logic, that makes perfect sense. As long as there's a vault door between him and us. Yeah. All right. So, let's see. Do I have... I need to put that mouse away, because I keep trying to use it, and it's not the right one. Let's take a look at Frostcliff, because that's where you all are. Uh, locations, villages, Frostcliff. So yeah, Frostcliff, uh, for those of you who haven't been here with the group, so Jen and Adam, uh, Frostcliff is, they very much take their crafting very seriously. Uh, every bit of this town is built around the art of their craftsmen keeping the forges going keeping the workers going and just making some of the best equipment that the forbidden lands have ever seen um, now there's there's definitely a drawback to this in that uh, they worship the act of craftsmanship and forging uh, in a very cult-like fashion if you are not actively contributing to the economy and you are in frost cliff uh, they are going to try and sacrifice you to one of their forges they will make you useful. Yeah, Dan. Yeah. Last time... <laughs> I, I, I did make checks. I just didn't pass a single one of them. Yeah. Last time, Dan almost got thrown into a forge uh, because he did not have money to buy anything. Well, not only uh, did I not have money to buy anything, but every time I tried to contribute in some way, I failed. So yeah. Everyone I, else... I was yeah. useless. Everyone else was spending money or providing a service to, you know... To, to help keep the town economy going. What BS did we spend to save his life? Something about like keeping the musicians like yeah he was like, like muse or something a, yeah something like that. Hello Spain, uh, pleasure to see you here. Okay. Uh, uh, this time I spent almost ten golds worth of money. So. Hopefully they'll feel better about me this time. That's true. Yeah, you have. Uh... So you're a rich and useless person. Good, good. Well, now I'm broke again. Still <laughs> useless, but broke. Uh, yeah, Huxley's pretty broken. Yeah. yeah. So that'll definitely we're be broken in a lot more ways. Yeah, those of you who are broken, uh, and those of you who are tending to the broken, uh, you're definitely going to have to keep that in mind. Um, yeah, uh, so anyway, why don't you all pick it up? What's going on? Uh, who's broken? Is it just uh, Huxley? I, well, I was, was but uh, go ahead. Yeah, I, I'm probably in the same position as Dan. Um, that I was broken, but I'm still injured, I think. Yeah, you had some healing time on that neck. Yeah, you should be out of the woods for like the the lethal the lethality part of it. Yeah. But yeah, we mm -hmm. still got to work on like fixing the broken issue. Yeah. So let's take a look at game rules. Let's see where that's even on my sheet now. Yeah, it's 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 basically like another another test essentially. Yeah. Um, and that'll let you reduce the heat because the healing because their your injury should have a healing time, mm -hmm. and then if I were to roll like a heal test now that we're out of combat to try to like tend to it like that would cut the healing time in half. Like you're still going to suffer the effects for at least a little while, but you get like some of it reduced with a heal test. Damn, there it is. Did we, did I we had, ever I had a... roll that time? Uh, I don't know. Actually, that I don't remember. That uh, we can take a look at the log here. I didn't clear anything out. Um, there's severed nose. I don't think we did. Skewered skull. Wow, y'all made a mess out of those poor orcs yeah. just minding their business. <laughs> Someone did get severed foot, but it was not Dan. Not this time, I got bleeding thigh. Do you remember the injury? I don't even remember. Uh, yeah, it was slit, slit throat, throat. Yeah, and severed ear. Uh, <laughs> okay, this through. slit throat is D six healing time, uh, and that should be days. Uh, and you rolled a three on that. Oh, I did. Okay, yeah. Three I think days. that was for rounds. Oh, yeah, that was rounds yeah. till death. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, go ahead and roll that d6. Okay. We'll see how many days you got to 
two days. It's not terrible. Uh -uh. So I can, so I'll go ahead and since we've kind of had some time, like I'm not broken, so I'll come up and I'll take a look like, at what, what happened to you. And I said, and I'll just say something along the lines of maybe next time death will wrap the second arm around you. It looks like it was just a little pat on the back and I'll, I'll tend to the tend to your wounds with a heal test to see if I can shorten that to one day. That'd be nice. Uh, but, and I do. Okay. So yeah, one day. Yeah. So I'll just spend some time stitching up the neck. Yep. I know I used to do some kind of painkillers, but pain's just a reminder that we're alive and that one day we won't be. So I don't think it's don't think it's necessary anymore. <laughs> there you go. And I'll reach in with my my teeth and just just rip off the last bit of the thread. Spit it off to the side. Huxley is he doesn't really react to much, many of the things you're saying. He goes, you must have been raised by orcs. No, not orcs. I was raised by a single mother who taught me how to play some instruments, how to sell myself for money. A song, that is. And then before I was the ripe old age of 12, she was off and gone and I was on my own. But that's just the way it is. Maybe I wasn't really on my own after all, because I like to think that death was watching over me since I was a young lad. It's comforting well, thought, if you think uh, about it. It is. Golden. I, am, I find that if we embrace death, sometimes she lets us stay here a bit longer. Hey, maybe. That's a, that's a good point. It's a good way to look at things, but if you've been here as long as I have, well... There's not much left to look at that's worth waiting for. Anyway, you're all healed up. You're all right. I suppose the proper question to that is, would you want to come back? Come back? It's not really up to me. It's up to the great beyond, you know? Well, It's my time. My time's run out, so be it. There are so things that can be done. No. Nothing like that. Nothing unnatural. Death is a natural state. You live for a bit, and then you die. And I like that kind of simplicity. I don't want to do anything else that would disrupt it. I'll remember that. You should. Just pat you really loosely on the back. Oh, and I'll just... I have something else. So oh. I point to my severity here. <laughs> oh, Okay, I guess I can. I suppose fix we should that roll too. that. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see here. It is. Oh, it. I might have replaced it. Uh, it just says five days. Uh, so yeah. So that's your healing time for it. Yeah. So I can just cut it in half. Is basically all it is. So you'll be suffering from the effect because there should be an mm -hmm. effect with yeah. that, and so you'll be suffering it from. That's another success. Um, and also, I think when I do that you might also get an extra strength back because I got an extra success there. Oh, there okay. you go. Possibly. I'll double check that, but you should okay. be okay for half the time. Do you round up when you have days? Mm, I don't no. know. I don't think it specifies. Let me I'll take a look. It. Let's round up just to be sure. Okay. Uh, so it's down to three. Now I'm going to have to spread out my spending across the three days that we're here so uh, you know they can like me every day. Yeah, you'll definitely need to do that. Um, so I guess we need to know how many days you're all wanting to spend here in uh, Frostcliff healing up because that is important. You need to you need to be doing something, or they're going to try and throw you in a forge. So Dan is uh, going on a spending spree. Uh, Dan, did you have any injuries that you needed to get healed up? I, I do, but I can heal them in a quarter day with my, my okay. Elven talent. All right, cool. We don't so, need to worry about that then. So I, I get so, that for free pretty much. Yeah. So Dan's healing. Uh, Jake, what's uh, what's Osborne going to be doing? Um, same thing he usually does. I just give kids a ride around the block on Bob for a couple of pennies. Uh, sure. Let's see what... I'm going to make you give me a stat for a check for that because 
If I remember correctly, I did that last time. Animal handling. Go ahead and give me an animal handling test. You know, righty. Um, I'm going to invoke my pride on this and add a. Is that a D12? Yes, it is. I think I entered that in right. Oh, wow. Ooh, there we go. Yeah, that D12, that's worth, uh, what was that, extra two or three Ooh. successes. Dang. Is it four? Is that what the little four X's mean? Oh. Yep. Oh, yeah. All right, yeah, Jake, yeah, you knock it out of the park. You're, you know, all the kids are running around riding on Bob. Uh, I'll tell you what, you move out of the, you know, the copper range, and I'll say that you managed to rack up six silver pieces worth of coin Ooh, nice dang yeah uh waits has anyone died recently are there any funerals um i'll tell you what uh there's always going to be funerals so yeah we're going to say yeah i mean death I is I might, regular i might companion. like to sing a little song or two for those who have recently departed Sure. So yeah, you go and you know the uh, bandage to find yourself work singing at the you know remembrances for those who are having their funerals. Go and give me your performance test. Sure. And I get my gear bones. Two successes. There you go. Uh, yeah, they'll go and they'll pay you for that. I'm gonna say you get a you'll get some silver out of that. Okay. Uh, four silver. Not as much as what you were hoping for, but it's fine. those in mourning don't quite tip as well as drunkards at a bar. It's all right. There's a, there's a more more valuable service that you all provided here. Thank you. Just a sobering reminder of our mortality. Thank you. All right. So, uh, Bellari. Bellari is going to find somewhere to do some cooking. Okay, yeah, there's the, the uh, tavern that you all stayed at last time. Uh, I don't have the name of it noted down here, so we're going to call it the uh, uh, the Frosty Mug Inn, because why not? Uh, so yeah, go ahead and give me that survival uh, test. One success. Okay, yeah, you. Uh, I'll give you, you make a silver off that. Alrighty. But, you know, you spend your time working in the kitchens, cleaning, you know, being, you know, uh, productive. Uh, all right. Jen, what is Grace going to be doing? To... I, I would like to provide the benefits of uh, leading a hunting party. Oh, with sure. my uh, eagle owl. Sure thing. So... Yeah, we get to bust into some different rules for that because hunting is a thing you can do. Where's our party sheet? Uh, so yeah, if you open up the party sheet, uh, you can go ahead and just click on the, uh, the hunt test and it'll roll that out for you. That's in the characters character directory. And then on the travel page. So would it be kill prey that I click on? Uh just Yeah, you're gonna do find prey. Okay, gotcha. And then when it prompts or if it does prompt. Oh, we gotta open your character sheet at least once. Uh does your animal companion give you a bonus to hunting? No. Okay, so yeah, go ahead and just click on Find Prey and roll that out. Uh, yeah, you got a success. Let's see. Uh, you find a deer. Sweet. So that's, if you want to... What's that? That's hilarious because that's what those owls hunt. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. There you go. 
Uh, so yeah, you need to give me a ranged weapon uh, attack or marksman uh, to see if you can get yourself this deer. Ooh, do you want to push that? Oh, yeah. All right. So this sheet's different. There's no push button. I just re-roll it then. Yeah, just go and roll it again. None of those dice would stick anyway, so. Okay. Okay. Uh, you do... Um, your longbow does take a point of damage, uh, so its bonus is reduced by one. Uh, you do take a point of damage in that, uh, is that agility, uh, but you do succeed. So yeah, you're able to gain five units of meats and three pelts, which you could then sell in town. Uh, they're going to be a little more generous on meat and pelts, um, simply because, you know, those are creation items and not, you know, someone else's shoddy craftsmanship because i know steely dan kind of got the short end of the stick when it came to selling off his stuff yeah but you know it allowed me to spend all my money there you go which at the end of the day was the plan <laughs> uh so yeah you can sell each pelt for eight copper and each unit of meat for six copper all right, Huxley. Huxley is very nervous. Um, so quick question. Uh, in Mutant Year Zero, you always get one mutant point. Um, is that the case in Forbidden Lands or not, uh, as far as willpower goes? Oh, that's a great question. I have no damn clue. What do you, what do you mean for? At the start of a yeah, session. Yeah, because I'm, I'm out of willpower and pretty much I don't the think only so. thing. I think, I think you it's just awesome. from pushing. This yeah. is great. Okay, uh, so then I do have one skill rank in crafting, but I have no talents. So, um, like Huxley would just be like, uh, "Do you need an assistant to help out?" Uh, what kind of craftsman are you going to be looking for to help out with? What do you think Huxley would be most comfortable with? I mean, you've got craftsmen of every. You know, mm -hmm. trade and profession here in Frost uh, Frostcliff. Now the the smiths are the center focus. Like their giant forges, kind of flank the town square. Um, but anyway, so yeah, you could find a craftsman for just about anything. Uh, he would probably be more. Um, I'm still not that familiar. I'm still new to this game, but he'd probably be more like familiar with. Uh, creating um, like reagents for rituals, if that's a thing. Uh, sure, you can find like an alchemist or something okay. like that. So yeah, why don't you go ahead and give me that uh, crafting test? Oh boy. Uh... Ooh, do you want to push that? I have to. Yeah. All right, <laughs> you will get your two. You get two willpower though. So Ooh. go ahead and hit that button. Okay, well, at least I got the willpower, but yeah, I did not succeed. So it looks like I'm going in the forge. You, uh, so yeah, you try to help out the alchemist the first day, and uh, you really just mess it up. You end up costing them money. Uh, <laughs> they, they definitely, they, uh, friendly conversation the day passes through. Um, but uh yeah they're they're kind of probing like so where are you staying tonight wherever waits and all the rest of them are staying oh so you're traveling with the uh with the bard okay i know i messed up um it's it's fine i don't have any more work for you here though so please go away so on that he's like scrambling and trying to think of something he can do. Yeah. And then he sees Waits performing for the the funeral. Yeah. And he he walks over and he says, um, "Excuse me. Uh, who is the bereaved?" 
Uh, so they would, um, you know, point out it's uh, one of the the lesser smiths in town died. Um, so you know, you can see the the widow and the children. Um, you know, they they explained that this smith was uh, sharpening some blades, and they didn't take proper care of their uh, grinding stone, and it bit and threw the the blade they were working on down into their thigh and just cut the artery and they bled out in minutes right there in their workshop. Uh, so, yeah. So, uh, first off, I want to offer my condolences. The, um, well, she thanks you. She's heartbroken, but, you know, he, he died in the service of, uh, of a forge. So it is a, it is an honorable death. Well, I happen to be able to offer some services. Uh, I, I did bungle up trying to help out this town, but in doing so, I was wondering if you had any unfinished business or unfinished questions for your husband, because I may be able to offer a seance if you need to speak to him one more time. Are you... You're serious? You can let me speak to my husband again? Well, I can be a messenger. I can speak with him. Y yes, that's fantastic news. He was practicing uh, a new technique for welding uh, pieces of steel together. Uh, and he was... Uh, working on perfecting a new uh a new compound he called it flux hmm. uh but he never shared what the the ratios of the ingredients are um if you can get that that will be amazing for our family hmm. well i can speak with him if we if the body is still present uh, she, they, they cremate their dead in the forges. I see. Is this already been done? Yeah. She points at the, the mausoleum there and turning him at, and like she points at a, you know, a, a hammered brass urn, uh, that contains his remains. There's still something I can do. Okay, uh, yeah, if, if you can get us the the ratios of the ingredients, um, that will help our family out greatly. I'll do my best, because uh, if I don't, well, it looks like I'll be joining him in another way. Yeah. Uh, so I'll go to the urn, and so the spell says, if their victim's remains are reasonably in attacked you can speak directly with the corpse otherwise you hear the dead as a disembodied ghost voice in your head okay so it's up it's your call which one it is um so uh, it would be a ghostly voice okay so the ingredient would be some of the ashes it says body part from a dead person <laughs> yeah you would have to get into that coffee can get a little bit of get a little bit of ash oh yeah um were they giving you permission to do that? She would be, yeah. Okay, because if not, I can help with that. <laughs> uh, if yeah, she if you asked her like I need a little bit of his ash, she'd be like, please just go ahead, just take it. Yeah, am I going out to a beach and trying to spread it and then having it scatter in the air because it's in a coffee can? Is that what's going on? <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. One sec, so, I'll be back. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll uh, go ahead and cast a spell and um it's a rank two spell so i'll use the two willpower that i just got from trying to push nice yeah um and then let's see here speak to the dead there's that and then i need to roll two d6s because it's a power level two and let's expand this out. So five and a three, so nothing else happens. Okay. Um, so yeah, I can speak with him for one turn. 
Okay, sure. Um, the you hear this disembodied ghost voice. Uh, where am I? I'm, why am I not at my forge? Uh, hello, my name's Huxley. Uh, you've had you had an accident, and I hate to break the news to you, but you are dead. I. Yeah, I know. Ah. I was my forge in the great beyond. Well, you you will go back. Uh, I just needed to ask you something because your your widow really needed to know something. Yeah. Uh, she said she was working on something. It was flux. Oh yeah, for forging pieces of metal together to one solid piece of steel. Uh, that almost sounds like magic, but, uh, well, she, she really wanted me to see if I could get the ratios. Oh. Yeah, I left her a note in the, you know, in the cabinet in our bedroom. But if she wants to know again, like she probably lost it, she loses things. Uh, yeah, mm. it's it's two parts powdered sand. Uh, two. I uh, I look around. Um, two parts powdered sand, and like um, can't remember if I have a writing kit or not. No, I don't. <laughs> I have any sort of writing kit. Two parts sand. Yeah, two parts powdered sand, three parts powdered salt. And I'm looking at, at her as I'm saying this. Two parts powdered sand, three parts powdered salt. And five parts ash from an oak. Five parts ash from an oak. You get that's that. it. Well, there may be more, but I, th I think, you know, she wanted to be the best that she could be at, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, producing things so that she could join you in the afterlife. I don't blame her. Yeah, with, she, like, we were going to start a business selling it. It works great. Uh, it's exciting, it is. Uh, I'll, so this whole time I'm like, you know, just saying my end and she can't hear his, yeah. but I... I look at her and I say, did you get that recipe? She would confirm, like, yeah, two parts powdered sand, three parts powdered salt, and five parts ash from an oak. Yeah. So, yeah, she confirms it, yeah. She's like, I knew it was, I just couldn't, I could never get the ratios right. I always added too much salt. Mm. Uh, yeah, usually I like a fair amount of salt, but it's probably not good in this case, is it? <laughs> uh, but, um... Is there anything else you'd like to say to your husband before, uh, you know, you, you take this long break and you then join him in the Great Forge? Um, it's, she takes a little bit to think about it. Now, that it kind of lends to the, the odd kind of culture of this town where uh, being productive and work are first and foremost in people's thoughts um she's like um yeah tell him that i'll i'll see him soon and tell him that um i i remembered all of his business contacts so we're gonna be good like huxley looks a little perplexed but he he says uh, uh she wants me to let you know that she remembers your business contacts and that she's going to remain productive. Uh, and he, the the ghostly voice, just there's a sound of relief. Like, that's great news. I hope her and the boys can go on and uh, create great things and, you know, keep the forges fed. Very well, then. Um, is there anything else that you'd like me to say to her? Um, 
No, no, I've got some things, but I'm going to have to see her in the afterlife, so I don't want her to show up mad. So, no, that's plenty good. Tell her I love her, and, uh, you know, I'll see her when she gets here. There's always the money in the banana stand. Yeah. <laughs> the only thing I said is, well, he says he loves you, and he'll see you when you get here. There you go. I don't that's, say anything else. <laughs> that's fair. That's fair. Uh, he was thinking about sharing whether or not uh, he wanted to to pass along the news that uh, her sister's youngest kid was hers or was his, but uh, he decided it was probably best if he kept that a secret. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's bad for business. It's bad for business. Okay. Uh, yeah, and then the 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 ghostly phone call ends, and you get the you know the little disconnect tone, and you've. Uh, furthered the well-being of Frostcliff, despite your fuck-up earlier in the day. Uh, you feel pretty comfortable that they're not going to try and throw you in a forge. Well, yeah, I mean, if the town now knows how to make two pieces of metal one... Oh, boy. You know, that's, that's good, isn't it? Yeah. I'd, I'd hate to be in a state of flux. Ah... Uh... I don't, uh, yeah. Anyway, I was going to make a, a flex joke, but I just don't have the capacity for it. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's okay. Uh, well, perhaps I'm a flux capacitor. See, there you go. It's the setup. All right. Uh, so, yeah, you all spend a day or two in Frostcliff, staying productive, making some coin. Uh, Steely Dan buys everything he can get his hands on. Um, Lari buys some poisons for her bow. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Like it's, it's two two times book price. So if you all need to stock up on anything, they have it here. It's great quality, two times book price, but it's a plus one bonus on top of what's normally there. Got it. I bought a shield. There you go. Melissa, you've never watched Back to the Future. That's not true. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. Sure. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. You don't necessarily have the frequency of views that some others might. Uh-huh. <laughs> what have mm -hmm. you stumbled into? <laughs> anyway. You do. Keep a closer uh, eye on chat here. Yeah. <laughs> 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 appropriately conveyed here. <laughs> it looks like uh, uh, Dan's having a hard time hearing things. Uh, oh, Dan's ears broke. Yeah. Okay, now we can talk so much shit about it. I remember <laughs> this one time. I walked into a barn, and there was Dan standing on a bucket playing tetherball it was the goofiest thing ever like i don't know why he just didn't lower the pole like <laughs> oh tetherball i remember that the, the kids have a tetherball pull out back and uh my youngest decided hey i could totally sit on this thing and try and swing and they got really pissed when he just tore the rope off the pole <laughs> that's much much more likely outcome yeah <laughs> I'm just wasting time to see if Dan makes it back with his audio. Anyway, uh, I've wasted enough time. We'll wait for Dan and not kill his character until he can hear us again. Um, <laughs> I, can, I can hear you. Oh, you can. <laughs> oh, shoot. Oh. I, I, can, I can now. I can now. Oh, okay, good. Okay. So we didn't hear all that other stuff. Yeah, he uh, didn't okay. hear the, okay. the tetherball story. As, as it should be. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't know what happened, but my USB dock just ate shit, and all my monitors are off, and all my connected devices are dead. So, but I'm looking just... good, Dan. Good time. <sighs> you know, we we still see you and the cat. That's just weird cats. because the camera is going through the USB dock, so I don't know how it's working. Magic. We won't, we won't, magic we won't ask questions. Yeah, let's Gremlins not. Gremlins magic. Yeah. All right, so what's next? Uh, you've all, I'll say we've spent enough time for everyone to recover. Um, is there anything else you all would be looking for here? You know, information, other supplies, news? Um, I would love some armor, because apparently I don't have any. Yeah, armor, like I said, two times the book price. What kind of armor are you looking for? 
light, sturdy. Sure. Let me open up gear and shields and armor. I should have sold you my armor instead of them my armor. <laughs> so when you say enough you time, be contributing. that would be three days for my severed ear. Are we staying three days? Uh, it depends. Do you want to stay until your ear is completely fixed? I figured your slash throat was the priority. It is. Yeah, the ear is not. So okay. I just need to know. I need to know how many days just so I can track it. It doesn't okay. matter to me. Honestly. So, yeah, if you just want to stay a day just so you, you know, can recover from that, that's fine. Uh, so if you want some leather armor. Oh, that's just how to forge it. Leather armor costs four silver. Studded leather armor costs six or you can get into the metal armors like chainmail, plate. Uh, but that doesn't tell me the stats. Gear. Armor. Armor. Oh, leather, two out of two. Yes. Yeah, so that's a. Uh, Feature yeah, light. Two bonus, yeah. That's what I want. And I All have right. exactly four silver without doing the uh, deer meat and pelts. Okay, so I do have to say the number I told you was the, the regular price, so it would actually be eight silver here, but it would have a three out of three bonus. Oh. What's the conversion rate with copper and silver? Fuck, I don't do math. Uh, <laughs> I Jeff, just don't even know what it ten, is. Ten copper per silver. Look at Jeff, knowing things. Sometimes I just say stuff. And I'm not 100% sure, but if you just say it with confidence. That's all that counts, right? That's what I do when I teach, too. I'm like, yeah. sounds right. Hey, when I, you know, did more FaceTime with customers in IT, I mean, that's my shit. Just say something with confidence. They'll believe it. Yeah, they'll believe it. They don't yeah, need to know the true. details. It just has to work, and they have to, you know, have confidence in your skill. Anyway. Uh, so there was actually one thing. I did want to actually do a little research because... I know that we have like the one idea where this thing was, but there is something I don't have my notes in front of me, unfortunately, and I can't find the, the legend, but there were like three gems or these rubies that might still be attainable. And I know that, yeah, that one of them had to do with like a giant woman or something like that. Like a, it was like a, a female giant or some kind of fight okay. or something like that. So I was trying to basically see if I can pick up any, um, any legends or any uh, any lore, folklore reference? Sure. To uh, yeah, there's a specific skill for that, and I don't remember it right off the top of my head. Uh, lore. Give me a lore test, man. Okay. I Give me a lore that. test, and if you pass it, I will show you a fancy text document. So All right. I got want, a success. I can, I, can, I can push if you... If I just want a successes. success. That's okay, yeah, fine. Yeah, I got a success. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to show it to everyone and i'm gonna go ahead let me give me a second stream because i've got this cool feature i have to fucking use it right right all right so it said this is the, on the crown specifically you were looking for information on the crown uh and then the other gems and things and it all right. ties back to the crown so right. six elves for bin lands the one that planted trees drew furrows yeah anyway it does a lot of cool shit um uh, let's see uh, then we get down to, for a long time, the crown was worn by the kings of the land and granted to them power to keep the kingdom intact. But sometime right before the humans arrived, the thief Marigal stole three of the stones from the crown. The land had been sundered ever since. Uh, whoever uh, reassembles the, the stones in the crown um, will gain the power to rally all kin and rule over the forbidden lands. Now, there was a bard who received a vision from the god Huge. Um, that, uh, let's see, there was one in the scepter of a king, the jewelry of a queen, a sword that slays giants, and the crown was slumbering in a veil of dead guarded by a one-eyed giant. Yeah, Just a real giant dumb, stuff. Dumb quick connection. Isn't Marigold the name of the person who's with, uh, you know, mm -hmm. the, the yeah. king? Uh, Joke for yeah. Zertrum, Zertrum, yeah, the son. Yeah, like I'm trying to remember which Z named person. Yeah, yeah. there's too many Z names. Yeah, I'll dig that. Um, yeah, and so the scepter of a king was the one that we. Have, yeah, you right? have, you have mm -hmm. the scepter of the king. And then there's so there's the jewelry of the queen, which you queen. gave to the gave. red runners, right? 
And there's a sword that slays giants. Are we aware that's, of that that's one? That's the one that we were, I think, were trying to research on. Okay. And then there's the crown slumbering in a veil of dead guarded by a one-eyed giant. We probably need the sword before we go after the... So I guess... Um, oh, yeah, that's a good point. But I guess I will probably, if I could, spend some time researching like a veil of the dead. And that would make sense, considering I'm obsessed with death at this point. Oh, so absolutely. Yeah. Now, I will tell you, uh, just looking for that information... Uh, no, actually, you know what? Fuck it. Give me another lore test. Yeah, it could just be... It doesn't even have to be, like, legit. It could just be songs, like, stories, like, anything, like... any Anything I could potentially go on that might have to sure. do with... Like, I can I can help you with your lore tests as well, if you like. Yeah, if, if extra successes matter, then, yeah, I could tap in. Yeah, go ahead and roll it, and then... Uh... I got one. So. Dan, if you want to roll your lore tag. Uh, actually, success would just add you an extra D6 bonus, correct? That's uh, how... Assisting? Assisting, yeah. Because, Dan, if you want to assist... Yeah. Go ahead and just roll me a D6, Dan, and that'll be your assist die for Jeff. Ignore that. That was me. Okay. Uh, okay. I was going to say, or you, you could next time you could always just ask me and I could... Yeah, you know. de death, though, is, I think, his thing. But the other ones yeah. you probably wouldn't look into, like a sword that slays giants. So, like, we could say I go into looking for the Veil of the Dead and you start asking questions about something else, maybe. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, uh, so Jeff, you kind of, you rack your brains. You're going along, like, what songs have I heard about a Veil of the Dead? Uh, maybe there's some other musicians in town. Maybe you start asking them. Um, and they actually, they're just like, you're not from this immediate region are you no i'm a, a wanderer never quite had roots anywhere not for some time okay well i mean there is rumors that in the uh arena forest somewhere along the eastern edge is the ancient veil of the dead okay is there anything that uh lore or song suggests about that place anything uh -huh. yeah let me get you a legend about the veil of the dead uh and i'm going to show this to everyone uh so and then let me get it so the stream can read it too so, Jeff, why don't you go and read that legend for everyone? Stories tell of how Zyogfer the Defiler visited the Vale of the Dead beyond the Temple of Silence during the Alder Wars. The sorcerer's spouse, Smartea, taught him how to parlay with the deceased. But when she learned how Zyogfer abused the art, instead of seeking wisdom, he wanted to wake the resting bones to his service. She fled from him with two of their children. Zyogfer continued his work in the Vale until the Keeper of the Dead chased him away. In anger, the sorcerer drove the priests from the Temple of Silence. But before leaving the site, it is said that the holy men drowned its halls to keep them safe. Well, shit. That's dark. I like it. Yeah. So that's that's the, you know, the bard you find is able to share that information with you about the Vale of the Dead. Um... Got it. Awesome. Uh, what do we got going? We got someone spamming links. Spam or you? Right up your alley. Uh, where are they at? I'm gonna ban you. Don't do that, person. You're an asshole. I think Nightbot got it automatically, didn't they? They timed him out. Oh, they just timed him out. Okay. Yeah, cool. I went ahead and banned him. Chuck, what was the name of that forest? Uh, the Arena Forest. It's the forest that uh, the actual Eye of the Rose is in. Oh, oh God, I got it. Okay. Same area. That's where we're going. It's so interesting. So, Dan, what information were you searching for? Um, the sword in particular is what we're interested in. Sure. Or I'm interested in. Uh, so you start asking around about a sword. Um, they don't really have any real good library here. The libraries they do have don't do you much good if it's not, you know, tomes devoted to you know tradescraft of some form 
Uh, let me see. Yeah. If you want to go ahead and roll me that lore test, though. Yeah, uh, after hearing all this, like, since it is like my home region, does mm -hmm. that ring any bells with me at all? Oh, you are from here. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's fantastic. Yes, it does. Uh, the Orc Kingdom actually knows about the Vale of the Dead. Um, though you, um, you would all, you avoid it. Um, it said that, you know, the dead walk there, but the dead walk everywhere in the Forbidden Land. Seeing a corpse walking around, it's just a Tuesday, right? It's not a big deal. <laughs> uh, but more importantly, there's rumors that a giant guards the Vale of the Dead. And so if you all look at the map, Huxley, you would be able to point out, like, that's just right over here. Uh, you see... Oh, we, we've walked right by it. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what it is, and um, most of us avoid such places. However, um, me and my mentor took a trip or two in there. So yeah. it, you saying that you and your mentor took a trip there. Uh, I'm super great with that. I think that's fantastic. You would actually know that the Veil of the Dead, um, you were never able to truly find the actual Veil of the Dead, but you found kind of like the site. Um, and it's actually been overrun by rogue orcs uh, who've kind of embedded themselves there. Uh, and it's just kind of like the riffraff of the orcish kingdom uh, from the Eye of the Rose, so the king doesn't really give a shit. Um, but also they've been kind of contracted on by a strange group of creatures called whiners. Uh, let me, I've got, let me find where I found this at. You see... We was going and we was looking for the veil of the dead, but we couldn't ever really find it. You see, uh, we wasn't supposed to be there, and uh, it turns out that all the miscreants and refuse of uh, our great and wonderful civilization uh, would have found an ogre there because most of us won't go there. And I'll, I'll share it with all of you. So I'm showing a picture of whiners. They're small, probably just a little bit shorter than goblins. Um, very uh, seclusive, very... They like to hide. They don't trust anyone. They're not necessarily violent at the start. They do have a very strange ability where they can... They can create hollow stone. And they use that hollow stone to make their homes and to hide. Um, but the, the thing with the whiners is their flesh is supposedly very sweet and has magical healing properties. Um, so that kind of contributes to their need to stay hidden. Um, and it's very strange that when you went there, you saw all these orcs here. Um when it's supposedly a, a whiner stronghold of some kind. I relay all of that information with yeah. the exception of um, them supposedly being sweet. Okay. I don't, I don't say that. Yeah. What about the healing quality part? Do we know that? No. Okay. Anything no. that deals with eating them, you, yeah, you eating them, with, yeah. keep I, the information. I withhold that information. Yeah. Uh, Dan, I was working on getting you a legend about the sword because you definitely yep. did good enough to I figure a sword that uh, kills giants might be useful uh, going somewhere that's defended by a giant. Indeed. I mean, we went in there, thought we'd be alone, found out that we'd have to deal with a bunch of whiners, so we didn't want to deal with any whiners, so... Did you ever see this giant that they talk about? No, we didn't see that. Okay. But there are plenty of dead there too. Plenty of dead. 
Uh, I'm going to show you, Dan, this is the information. You know, I'm going to show it just to you, Dan. And you can relay the information you learned about the sword. Oh, no. <laughs> Keeping your secrets. Yep. In days past, bloodthirsty giant Scream ravaged the land. The stories tell of how the shield maiden Viridia slew him with a sword. Maligarn, the giant slayer. She received help from Scrome, the giant's brother, whose reward was to be appointed guardian of the gate where the deceased entered the underworld. That somehow sounds related. Um, our other rumor. But Viridia sustained such grave wounds during the battle against Scrome, Scream, sorry, that she died soon after. The emerald that she had made up of her heart was set into the crown, Stan and Geist, but his lair is said to have been moved to the sword. Uh, the weapon has been lost for a long time. So that does not um, tell us where to look for it exactly. It does not. Could look for some kind of um, place of rest for Viridia, maybe, where she might have been interned after her death. Yeah, that might be valuable. Name of the swords, the Malagar. Is that, is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Well, we've got a couple names to go on at least, so I think it's it's a good starting point. Do yeah. we want to wait then to travel to the Vale of the Dead until after we've sussed this out more? Or do we just want to go to death now, rush, and, rush into its embrace? Well, the other... Gather information. The other side of it is that it's apparently, uh, you know... I would hazard a guess that the uh, brother is the same giant guarding this veil. Could be. So, in theory, they may also know about the sword. You know, depending on you know whether we can talk with them peaceably or not. Wait, we could talk with the the giant, the giant. piece of peacefully about a sword that slays their own kind. I suppose. I mean, he was sort of responsible for it to a degree. <laughs> right. Well, he might be interested in the location of the emerald. Well, I'm not saying we'd receive the friendliest of welcomes if we did want to speak with the orcs that are in that area. I know if they saw me, it wouldn't be kill on sight. Not saying that we's, you know, best mates and all. But it wouldn't be like the last orcs we came across. They don't care about such things as leaving because they left themselves. To the, the party, Grace Osborne. Do you have a preference? Do we continue forward to the Eye of the Rose, or do we veer off to the Vale of Dead? Well, if we know uh, what the sword is called, Malagar, maybe we can look up such information in the Eye of the Rose. Find out where the Malagar is. Possible. Pretty wild world out there, and we've seen very little of it yet. That is the best, uh, most robust library we've come across. Anyone, if anywhere has a document, it would be there. That's what I guess, anyway. Yeah. Unfortunately, we do have a, you know, a passage into the library, and we have a contact in the library, so. So be it. Is yeah. there a way that I could get my weapon repaired and um, rest long enough to get my one Aji point back? Yeah, uh, the rest is fine. Go ahead and recover. Everyone go ahead and recover up. Uh, if you have injuries that have to go a number of days, uh, we'll have rested a full 24 hours. That way Huxley can get healed up. Hang on a second. So... Yeah, so uh, we're still going into the Eye of the Rose. I think so. 
but sounds like I mean we don't have to like go very far into it. Oh, and you in particular point. Yeah. don't have to necessarily go into it. We have like a secret passage that we discovered and maybe we could uh, kind of camp out inside of it and just send one or two people in to gather information. Now, if you remember correctly on that secret passage, it actually opens up into a hidden chamber inside the library that yep. can only be opened from within that secret chamber. So, Dan, your your idea there is completely and totally viable on that, uh, from what you would remember. There's a, a securable room in the library that this passage dumps into. Yep. So, yeah, we, we could keep our exposure pretty minimal, I think. Right. True, of course. Or we could be bold. Just go right to death. <laughs> if we're being bold, there's one person I need to see. Yeah, I remember we talked about that a little bit last time too. Sneaking and maybe in, our, seeing the master. We, yeah, we can play it by ear too. You know, we can get there and see what things are like. It's a little too soon, Dan. My friend Huxley is missing in here. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say play by our ears. I just said play by ear. Okay. <laughs> what? Don't worry about it. It's not important. He said you can play it by ear. <laughs> I like your new look, Huxley. Um, I'm not a musician. I right, you are. <laughs> All right. So, if I'm hearing this correctly, the plan is to go and hit up the eye of the rose to find the library to get back into the library uh what is your intention in the library what information are you going to be looking for Alagard for one like the, the the sword slayer or the giant slayer excuse me yeah um any information that we know about the veil of the dead okay yeah any additional information at least yeah anything extra and then the queen's jewelry was that one we still haven't accounted that's for? the one that we turned over oh, that's the one we turned over okay yep. yeah and any information about the brother any stories about the okay brother uh which brother the giant the viridia's or... brother yeah viridia. the giant okay yeah anything about viridia where she might have been laid to rest any oh okay like yeah yeah because she yeah, was helped by Scrom to defeat Scrom's brother. Yeah, all right. So, Eye of the Rose, we got some traveling to do. Uh, my first question is going to be, do we take known paths so you all can avoid additional hardships, or do you want to move through some new hexes? To death do the, is the uh, catty corner. Death is the most uh, glorious of unknowns, but until we can embrace that, I suppose we should take some lesser unknowns. I think it might be nice to like on. cut cut one spot so yeah. we can get to uh, get our XP. I'm sure, we don't want to yeah. just do a little drive by the <laughs> veil of the dead. Just smell it just a little bit. I mean, we could, and then that would uh, cover our path back to it later. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. If you go right next to it, you just have to divert a little bit of time to go and scout up on the veil, uh, see what's there. Who knows, once the aura of it starts to reach us, we might just feel compelled to investigate it further. <laughs> Getting ahead of myself. Yeah. Calm you yourself, know, Waits. I'm not, a, I'm not against this idea. Okay. Well, it sounds like, uh, you know, we can start with this hex and see how badly uh, things go for us. Sure. I, I think that's more or less the plan we had last time. Did, did we actually already go through this hex, maybe? Because that's how we got in trouble and all wrecked last time? I, I don't remember. I've slept since then. <laughs> that that may be what we, we, we may have already gone through this. Well, we hex. didn't come from that direction. You were. We came, to, we came to Frostcliff from the hollows and such. Yeah, and I think it's where we've got the double. Stone. 
I think it was I think one you, of these over yeah. here. Yeah, oh, maybe from the this. east. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I thought we were there. We maybe I know. I think I, I think it was a it was actually we to get credit like metal wise to get credit for XP we went to like an, an unexplored hex that was right next to Frostcliff yeah that sounds right. yeah it. yeah yeah but now we're gonna do this one yeah yep just head southwest yeah yep yeah everybody can hey. everybody can. yeah so if you want to open up the party sheet uh, go ahead and roll we'll need our you know our pathfinder lead the way whatever it is in this particular system wow that's fantastic uh dan were you rolling your uh two successes yeah so you all hear it from the distance as you're moving through this portion of the forest it's a kind of dark overgrown the Iranian forest is you know it's thick um but as you hear it kind of echoing out in the distance, you hear in a deep kind of gravelly voice, toil and trouble, trouble and toil. Um, and it kind of echoes across the land. Um, then you see kind of moving between a break in the trees in the location of the sound. It looks like a very large and very muscular ogre dragging a sack and it looks like there's something actually like kicking in the sack. You hear like muffled curses. Um, you know, every now and then the uh, the ogre kind of turns around and kind of kicks the sack. You know, jabs it with the toe. Shut up, you! I said, and then it goes back to marching. You know, toil and trouble, trouble and toil. It's like a strange, like you know, uh, you know, marching jaunty or whatever the fuck you want to call it. Do we know much about? the predispositions of, of ogres around here? Um, Are they ogres, prone to just snatching people and eating them? Yeah, they're not... Uh, they're not necessarily great. They're not, you know, everything here is gray, uh, shades of gray, right? Okay. Um, but yeah, uh, you would have some experience with ogres from... Uh, oh, what was the name of that one place you went to? Uh, Ravenhole. Yeah. Um, that was an all ogre settlement where they were for shits and giggles uh feeding people to uh to a giant bear uh, yeah, yeah, for yeah. entertainment um okay Waits is going to make himself completely seen and cleared yeah that sounds like a wonderful tune you're singing there sir or ma'am uh Thanks, my uh, mother taught it to me. Did she now? Yeah. My mother taught me how to use the pointy end of a sword and how to use my beautiful voice to pay for supper. Mothers are a special thing in this world. Yeah, my mother, she was pretty great. I feel bad how things ended between us. How did they end? Oh, uh, She was a dwarf. I accidentally sat on her lap. These things happen. <laughs> She's in a better place now. Yeah. I assume you, you you killed her in doing so. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she died. Right. Yeah. Otherwise, maybe she might not be. She might be up your ass, and that would be not. That would be place. weird. Like, be it would place. make it hard to set down. Right. It would be. That's, is, is, there, is there any, are there any more lyrics to that song? No, just just them words, toil and trouble, trouble and toil. You do it when you're, you know, doing hard work and trying to figure something out. So keep, keep singing it a bit, and I'll pull out the lute, and I'll try to just, like, get a little, like, a sure. song, a little rhythm Give me whatever your, your performance type test to this, yeah. Okay. Uh, performance test. Gear bonus. Two nice, successes. you did good. Yeah, so he he, you know, um, grumbles out some more bars of toil and trouble. He's trying to like pitch wise kind of match your loot playing, but he's really bad at it. Oh, you know, that that's sounds, my, sounds wonderful. Uh, my mom would be; she would have been proud of that. I think. Of course, that uh, you have a you're a natural lead singer. You know, you're, oh, wow. a, you're, a, you're a front man is what it, what it is. That's great. I'm 
mostly front because I'm shaped real weird and get real kind of narrow in the behind. So that's that's fantastic that I'm a natural front man. Absolutely. Uh, oh, hey, what's there? What's that you're carrying there? Oh, oh, actually, you could probably help me. No. Yeah, you could help me. I think this is great because, you know, I could always go to my mother for help. And yeah, this is an asshole. And he kind of mashes it against a tree a little bit, not super oh. hard. And you hear someone call like, God damn it, you foul beast. Let me go. Oh, you've got a, got a person in there, do you? Yeah, yeah. He, uh, he cursed me, and I don't know what to do about it yet. Um, uh, I was, yeah, yeah. He's one of them, like, oh, God, what do they call it? The, the ones with the... Christ, they're like, uh, they got the crap on them, like metal. Like, when you leave it out in the rain. Oh, Rust Brother. Yeah. yeah, it's a Rust Brother. He did the weird Rust Brother curse on me. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, I want to get him back for it. Sure. How are you planning to do that? Well, I was looking for a pond, I think. I was going to practice skipping stones with him. Okay. All right. But I'm not sure yet if that's the best way, you know. Well, I've got a question for you. Oh, there's more. Are you sure? Oh, yeah. Hey, hey folks, come meet my new friend over here. Oh, yeah. Friend, I'm Kurge. Oh, Kurge. Waits. Yeah. How far I like this guy. Name's Huxley. <laughs> nice to meet you, Huxley. And Waits. Dan. Hi, Dan. Blari. Hi, Blari. Do you say that your uh, name is Courage? No, just Courage, not Courage. I'm not a oh, dog. <laughs> I'm Grace. Hi, Grace. I'm Osborne, and uh, this is not a dog. This is a hog, and my hog is named Bob. Hi, Osborne, and a hog named Bob. I'm Courage. And uh, he kind of picks the sack up and kind of like shakes it real hard. Don't be rude. What's your name? And you hear the muffle like, I, I'm Brother O'Kerr. Please help me. Get me out of here. Uh, a question. Yeah. If you, if you kill him, uh -huh. does the curse go away? I'm going to presume so. It why, doesn't why, always work that way. Why, why did he curse you in the first place? Oh. Uh, Brother O'Kerr. <laughs> Uh, were you asking the, the Rust Brother or are you asking Courage? Kind of both at the same time. I don't know. Like, he got real mad at me. Like, I was just having dinner one night and, like, out he comes, like, yelling and shaking his fists and, like, saying weird words and there was lights and shit. And I'm like, oh, none of that. So I just hit him over the head and put him in a sack. What were you having for dinner that evening? Oh, I was eating cows. Okay, all right. Wild <laughs> cows, or yeah, they were trapped though. Like they couldn't get out of this like weird pen thing. So I broke them out right. and ate them. I uh, encourage would holler. He was stealing the temple's cows. Uh, oh, this just looks like a big misunderstanding, is what it looks like here, doesn't it, folks? Hey, sure does. Um, I think we might be able to weigh to find a way to get that curse removed oh that would be great then i can play stones with them now well, brother ochre are you willing to remove your curse that you set upon this fine ogre fella give me a manipulation test on that jeff oh god i just need to figure out how i'm gonna set how much of an Cost. asshole this Rust Brother is. I, I'd like to assist on that. Give me a D6, Adam. And if it's a six, you add an additional success to Jeff's roll. Jeff, you already got two success. Oh, wow. Oh, that'll yeah. work. Nice. Um, uh, uh, li listen, I know it's a thing you can do, and this is your best chance of survival. Wait, stealing from the Church of the Rust Brothers is punishable by death, but... I'm sorry, that's the wrong voice. In this instance, uh, 
I I would be willing to forgive if he just lets me go. Well, Kurge, are you willing to let the curse come off you and let this this Rust brother go? I don't know. Um, I ain't decided yet. Play me a few more of them notes there, and let me sing a few more bars, and I'll uh, I'll see what I feel like. No, oh, I'd be, I'd be. Well, happy is not the word, but uh, I'll do <laughs> it nonetheless. Yeah. So yeah, you you string, you know, get your loot, strum a few things while you're toil and trouble, trouble and toil. Uh, all right. I'll tell you what, Waits. I trust you. You think letting him go is the right thing to do? Well, I think that's the only way we can be sure that the curse is removed from you. Without Otherwise, harm. we're just guessing. All right. And he takes the sack and he dumps this rust brother upside down onto the ground. The rust brother is just wearing his small cloth. Like he must have like realized what was going on in the middle of the night and just ran out as is. All right there, tiny one. Take your curse off me and I'll let you go. And brother O'Kerr like fine beast and he says a few prayers and uh his hands light up and there's a strange kind of like flickering light that uh fades off of courage the curse is lifted please don't eat anyone else's cows if they're in a pen that's stealing listen cows are uh they're free citizens you can't can't own a cow they're their own people Hey, wait. I think I this, this. I think this Rust brother owes us something. Uh, I, I do. Uh, definitely his life, number one. But we would probably be able to trade that for something else. Is there something you're thinking, Huxley? Well, I, isn't they? As I'm like, I'm whispering, but I'm going to speak louder just so people can hear. Um, isn't that something that? Uh, I can't remember the involvement we have, but aren't they the ones that killed them people? that we found when I first joined you. So just to, to give you a little context, Adam, so far the Rust brothers have been almost kind of like a scourge on the good people you've come across. Uh, mm -hmm. You were traveling to the hollows where well, the party was traveling to the hollows on the first session. And in the forbidden lands here, the dead not resting is like I said, it's a Tuesday. It's an everyday occurrence. And most of the time, the dead are friendly, and they just want to try and live their best lives. Um, and so the Hollows was trying to evacuate some of their debt because they heard that a band of Rust Brothers was coming up because the Rust Brothers like to imprison the undead and force them into labor because they're dead. They don't have rights or opinions or feelings anymore. Uh, so your first run-in with the Rust Brothers was fighting off three Rust Brothers uh, so you could let some peaceful debt continue their peaceful undead existence. And yeah, you've come across that temple with a, what looked like maybe Raven sisters that were slain by Rust brothers. Uh, and it's kind of like every encounter you've had with Rust brothers. They are either trying to enslave people. They're trying to kill non-believers. You know, you've heard stories that when the Rust brothers show up to a village, they demand that everyone convert to worshiping the god Rust. Oh yeah, these these folks. Yeah. And if there's any hesitation, you're killed. If you refuse, you're killed. Unless you immediately drop to your knees and accept Rust as your god, uh, they will kill you. And we've gotten information that kind of sets them as agents of Zodkir as well. They so. yeah, you've also gotten that information that they've actually seemed to be allied and working with Zodkir, the giant half man half woman half spider demon creature it's way too many halves but you get my point yeah all bad pretty much yeah. kind of like a half shark alligator half man yeah that's it exactly <laughs> well we could just uh, say he owes us a favor future favor and such such time comes that we need information about the rust brothers or something like that we can uh a favor is not bad to have, Cash even if it's from you. someone you don't care for. Yeah. Yeah. 
fine. So while while right. you all deal with ochre, I'm gonna pull courage aside. I'm gonna pull the ochre. Aside. Okay. I'm gonna talk to him for a minute. But go ahead. Sure. Uh, I'll just tell you this. Uh, uh, Brother Ochre would say that he's actually uh, based out of. Let me make sure I tell you the right place. I've got so many books, I can never find the right one. <laughs> You know, and me just thinking uh, wild thoughts here is we may be able to add a, an ogre to our to our castle. That's exactly what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was thinking we could put the ogre in the labyrinth with the minotaur. Yeah. And then we'll be best friends with whoever comes out. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, or you could just do something for us, too. We can beat him. Uh, he would, like <laughs> yeah, he would actually point out that he is based out of. <coughs> uh, let me make sure I tell you the right name, so I don't have to lie to you later. We're gonna have ourselves quite the the motley crew at our at our keep here. Color. Yeah, for me. Uh, he's actually based out of Hagler's house. Almost directly south of the Eye of the Rose. Hmm. Okay, there it is. Um, let me get it. Okay. Oh. Uh, and that's where he found this ogre consuming his cattle late at night. Uh, and he'll tell you what, if uh, if I owe you a favor and you ever need to reclaim it, you can find me at Hagler's house. I will I wouldn't anticipate finding us there anytime soon, but you know. Uh, now you you probably would have heard some basic rumors of Hagler's house. It is actually a castle and a stronghold of the Rust Brothers. Yeah, which is why I'm hesitant to go there ever. But you never know. Well, yeah. we'll we'll keep it in mind. Where did we find? Um, those Raven sisters. Um, where that red X is. Okay. Yep. Tell me, tell me something. You ever been to the southeast a bit? The mm, tempo. No, I my my primary job or duty uh, for the the Rust Brothers is to. Keep the rural farmers around Hagler's house productive, so that way our our congregation uh, has enough food to keep us fed and healthy. So I I do not travel usually. This is the farthest away from home that I've been in some time. Hmm. All right. My monitor is just turned back on for some reason. Oh, it's so fancy. I know. That's all I have concerns with. What what, what kin is he? He's human. Uh, Rust brothers are very human-centric. Hmm. Um, yeah. That's all I really wondering about when it comes to the Rust Brothers. Ruffus. Fine. I will owe you a favor, and if you ever need to claim it from me, I will be outside of Hagler's house uh, at the farm that I dwell in. Uh, you will notice it because it has the large uh, statue of Rust outside of it. Um, I do not imagine that a bunch of heathens and heretics such as you would ever venture that far. Um, but I do owe you my life this day and I will give you thanks for it. That's good uh, enough for us. He's ready to, to march off to try and make it home. You're welcome. Uh, yeah. Thanks. As much you. as I don't want to help a Russ brother out, uh, you know, I'll give him a little bit of food and rations. Oh, Just wow. Kind of Go you. All right. Yeah. Cement, uh, or token of, of goodwill and hopefully, you know, a little more I, spice on that favor. 
I do thank you for this. It will be needed. I would have never, never expected such kindness from a creature with such vile heritage as you, but I do thank you for this. Well, Laurie will make a snide comment about it's interesting what happens when you get out in the world and meet people where well, lots of people can be good people. I and just wander off. Okay, that's fine. Just making making the point. Okay. Yeah, he, he takes the hint and he wanders off. You can hear him muttering something under his breath about the blood mist as he walks away, but his interaction is done. Now, Waits, what do you want to talk to Courage about? He's like, oh, I say, hey, a friend. Courage, you know, uh, if you ever... If you ever get into this kind of trouble again, or if you're ever hungry and you don't really want to, you see, there's a lot of folks around here who think that they can just take cows and put them in a couple pieces of wood and say that that's theirs all of a sudden. Right. I mean, like you can't control like a tree, like the tree's not yours. You can't control a gust of wind. Like why would a cow be any different? I know. And uh, you know, I worry, you know, you're, a new friend of mine, very good friend now. You know, if you ever need some place to to stay, you know, we uh we ourselves, we've uh, we've got ourselves a nice little uh little place up north called Weatherstone. We'd be absolutely overjoyed to have uh, a fellow such as yourself there. I it's been uh it's been a while since I've been able to talk about my mother with someone and I think you and I are or two peas from different pods, but uh, or maybe the same pod. I don't know. But, yeah, uh, yeah, that's awfully kind of you. I, listen, you can always trust Ken. That's true, you know. And uh, it's there's plenty of places to sit. And you don't got to worry about sitting on anybody. How tall are the ceilings? No, oh, some of them are tall. very tall. They're that's tall great. Either. either listen, either you know, like. Like, oh, don't steal my cows, or you try and go inside and you just hit your head on everything. Mm-hmm. We got a beast in the moat. Yeah, we, we got, got plenty of stuff to do there. Mm-hmm. And uh, if you head there and we're not there when when you get there, we've got our got a couple friends there. Just let Heladrin know that. Uh, Heladrin, all right. Heladrin, yeah, we sent you. We sent you. That might not be too bad. I was kind of wondering. I don't really want to go back to Ravenhole. I kind of got in some trouble. Yeah, well, it's kind of a shithole. No offense. But, hey, uh, none taken. Listen, like, uh, if you can't piss on a bear right before a fight, like, then what the hell can you piss on? I agree. I don't know. This is a tough question. I never thought I'd be asked a question like this on any day. What kind of world do you live in when someone tells you where and when you can piss? That just seems just... It was good luck piss. Like, I drank some really good grog right before that. Like, yeah, it still smelled good. Like, I would have drank that. No problem. (laughs) Some people just have different standards. Uh, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we don't subscribe to one particular way of living. At Dead Weatherstone, all are welcome. Different backgrounds, different thoughts and feelings, and so we would welcome you as well. Just, just be nice to each other. That's, that's pretty much all we're looking for. No, nope, no eating anybody. We're not allowed to. No eat cursing each other. people, right? No cursing. No people. cursing people. No eating people. You know, I'm good with that. Friendly. Yeah. Okay. No, I, no do, eating people. I do have to say, if you piss in my kitchen, you're not going to be welcome anymore. I do. Just you know, uh, I, I hate, hate cooking. Seriously, I'll be behind Bellari, and I'll be like, <laughs> "I'm not one for rules, but uh, I could probably deal with that. Like, no pissing in the kitchen. A pot of like, soup, listen, like it's, it's not just an invitation like, for more ingredients. How else do you get your soup Same. to taste salty? There's other ways. Put salt. I spent 64 years wandering this earth. There are lots of ways, and I'd be happy to cook meals for you and show you that there are better ways you, to salt a soup. Do you cook cow? I cook anything that comes from the earth. Including cow. Wait, do cows come from the earth, or are we talking like some weird like vegan stuff? Because I don't know about that. <laughs> we eat meat. Don't worry. We eat meat. Not knocking the vegans or anything. Like, listen, I've had some good tofu before, but... My uh, my my mama before I sat on her and killed her. She you know she taught me the 
You know, nothing's better than a tasty steak on a warm summer day. Can't argue with that. Well, listen, Courage, you just, uh, you know, have a good trip. We got a couple errands to run here, but uh, hope to see you back at Weatherstone soon. I think that's... You uh, our duet. Yeah. Oh, man, I forgot about the singing. You fucking got it, buddy. We can eat cow and sing. Yeah, yeah we can. Uh, hey, you wouldn't happen to know anything about that... Uh, that Valley of the Dead over there. You, uh, oh. you wander these these uh, this forest all that much? Every now and then, I've swung through there before. The orcs there, they got some good hooch they brew up. Oh, okay. And those whiners, you know anything about them? No. They listen. You try and eat one, and then the whole group of them hide from you. It's bad enough that it pissed the orcs off. You piss the orcs off. Well, that's that. why they're there, right? They, the them weird whiners, done hired them to protect them. Ah, okay, I see. Well, all right. Well, that's something we didn't know before. Good information. You, you you've eaten one, eh? I tried. I did try. I heard they're sweet, like uh, like fucking cinnamon rolls or something. Yes. I have heard of such a thing being said. Yeah, cinnamon rolls are pretty sweet. Right? I mean, fuck yeah, they are. It's good to know that, well, at least you didn't get in too much trouble. No, I mean, they weren't happy with me, but you know, fuck them. I, I've never heard of that. Uh, well, it's a euphemism. Like, I wasn't literally talking about intercourse. I was talking about, like, I'm done with them as a, as a person. Like, you can go away now because I'm frustrated and no longer wishing to interact with you. Forgive me. That was me trying to be in jest. Oh, I get it. Sometimes I'm a little slow on jokes. I think we'll go along just fine. I think so, too. Listen, we got cow. If you go talk to them orcs down there in the Valley of the Dead or whatever the fuck it is, uh, definitely try some of their hooch. It's good shit. See if we can grab a cask for you and bring it back to oh, Weatherstone. That'd be fantastic. So good. Let's see if we can get that arranged. I do like some good orc hooch. It's good stuff. This stuff's real good. They... They said they I could look at the their uh, where they fucking cook it. I don't know what the name of the I fucking uh, I don't remember the name of what it's I'm called. Gonna call it the hoochery. <laughs> the hoochery. They let me look at their hoochery, but it was in this weird cave, and Sounds like I like got down and right? I looked inside, and like it was crazy. There was like a a little waterfall inside, and there was some fire, and there was like some armor and shit, and there was like a. Oh, one of them things that you toot on. Well, I like yours where you play it like this, but where you go like, oot, oot, and it, like, it makes... I'll show my horn. Like I yeah, to... like a big one of them things. Okay. And that's where they said they made their hooch at. And it was good stuff. Like, I don't know what the fuck they're doing, but they're doing it right. I've oh, never had my toe hairs curled so goddamn hard rather than, you know, drinking some of that stuff. Courage, you are an endless source of entertainment and information well thank you friend like listen i would not be surprised you're a good person i wouldn't be surprised to find out if we were like cousins or something i, I definitely would welcome such news mm -hmm. that reminds me i miss my daddy he died young fucking humans god damn it they don't live long enough i never knew my father he went to the grave before i was born I've I've always considered humans to be long lived. Oh, something about your tree doesn't make any sense. What do you mean? Like my daddy was he was a dude named John. My mama was a dwarf named Dwarfalina. 
I, li- I heard or beautiful uh, name or it's, it's beautiful name. she was a beautiful she had I think the I might have known a Dorfalino if you knew her younger. listen she had a cherry red beard it was so soft I remember just like she would let me comb it it was so soft and like it just gave me such peace in my heart this sounds so it's like familiar. you can see I'm like he starts man, to tear but... up just a little bit how do you feel about rabbits uh, usually I don't like hair in my stew. Do you pet them at all? They're, they're so soft too. They're so tiny though. Like, how do you get them? They're quick and they're tiny. Someone I said like, that. hey, you want a rabbit in your elephant stew? And I'm like, no, I don't like hair in my stew. Someday we'll bring one. Maybe you'll like touching it. Gentle. We'll see. If we, if it doesn't work, maybe, uh, I don't know, we can, like, throw it at wall or something. <laughs> um, as you're all having this conversation with Courage, um, the, uh, the fox sitting on the wagon is like, oh, does he ever stop? Oh, what? shit. Uh, fox noises. Yep, 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 yep. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, wait a minute. Wait. Which which one of us is irritating you over there, Fox? Uh, The fox hops off of the cart and kind of hides under it. Did it's too late now? Y'all, y'all heard that, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I heard something, but I wasn't sure what it was. I mean, even this guy probably heard it. I'm going to point courage. Yeah, that fox fucking talked, man. Like, what the fuck? Oh, I lean down and <laughs> you can come on out now. I think the cat's out of the bag. I mean, we all knew already. Um, the fox it's- slowly walks out. Like, uh, yeah, that's my bad. How common hmm. are talking foxes? Not. We, we thought we heard it singing one time, so we brought it with us. Was you singing? That was you singing, Dan. I said that was that damn fox singing. I, I didn't doubt you. I believed you. I doubted you. Uh, I mean, that makes sense. To, I mean, I never heard a singing or talk. Who the hell are you? Uh, my name is Finnegan. I wasn't, listen, I wasn't going to do you any harm. I just liked your music. Well, that's, I mean, that's, that's just, that's understandable. It's understandable. Yeah. 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 I mean, we don't got any issues with you. Why didn't you not tell us you could talk sooner? Yeah. Most people don't like demons traveling with them. Give us one second. Um, Huddle up, huddle, team, team huddle, team, (laughs) team huddle. Uh, (laughs) He's a demon. Must be an all right one. Hadn't done anything. Are there all right demons? Maybe he's the kind of demon that like starts fires and stuff. Uh, Jeff, mm-hmm. give me a scouting test. A scouting test? Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> uh, scouting. Yes. Scouting test? No. Uh, I'll push. Sure. Sure. Got one. Okay. Uh, you see he's actually kind of slipped up right behind Bellari. It's kind of like peeking in the group huddle behind Bellari's boot. Like, listen, like, not all of us demons are terrible. You've already met a handful of demons that, you know, didn't do you any trouble. Like, fuck that bear, though. Hey, that's fine. I mean, I was just gonna lean over and, you know, Chief, are you cool? But you're already right here, so, I mean, like, are you cool? Yeah, like, I just, I like music, right? Like, it's one of the few things that you fucking, like, flesh bags have, like, done right. You don't go around, like, eating people and stuff like that while we're not looking? No. How many people have you eaten since you've been with us? Okay. Uh, Do you count people that were already dead when you came across them? Yes. All right, like six. Oh, God. Just the dead ones? Just the dead ones. Listen, I know your gig. Like, I don't want to fuck this up. Like, I really like your music, Waits. Like, I'm a fan. 
I mean, we do tend to leave a lot of dead people around. Like, I figured you all would be pretty pissed and have a hard time getting gigs if I were killing people everywhere you went. So I just wait until you all kill people. And then you know, I, I eat. Right? No. I kind of don't have issues with that arrangement because then, it, you know, our messes get cleaned up too. It, you know, and it, it's not like... It's not like I've ever fucked you all over. Like, hell, even in some of those performances you've sang in bars, I even did backing vocals. Like, I just kind of hid behind a curtain. Yeah, I thought there was a bit of harmonizing there. That See? Yeah. I always Hold thought on. it was just Alecrine getting better, but I guess not. Alecrine's okay. He needs a lot of work. Like, yeah, that's true. I thought about revealing myself to Alecrine because he could use a vocal coach. Like, it's true. Yeah. So, like, he needs to, like, pr- like, you can tell he's not a person that sings from the diaphragm, and he could use some help there. Yeah, but he does. I'll tell you, when he does do it, he's one hell of a tenor. He's not bad. He's not bad. Yeah. Uh, wait. What? No, that's him. No, I'm speaking to wait. Yeah. Oh, okay. What's that, Huxley? Could we talk just you and me, all okay. side-like? Yeah, 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 yeah. Keep an eye on the fox. Yeah, he can stay with me. I, I don't want you to pick me up. That's degrading. Listen, okay. all right. I'll take all right. the hint. I'll wait here, and I'll sing you something. I'll tell you what. I'll show you what I can do. Um, And Finnegan the fox starts... uh. You know, very like low baritone, like some old like she saying uh, she sea shanty. Fuck, that's the right way to say that. She sea shanty. shanty. Uh, he gives a, a nice little performance to all of you while Huxley and Waits have their private conversation. Nice. Are there many dealings with demons with me for memento? It's part and parcel of the old blood magic thing. Um, Demons don't necessarily lie, but they often don't, they often only tell part of the story. You see, it's a live omission, right? So, uh, you just may want to ask a few more questions than usual when talking to him, eh? Sure. I mean, I don't trust a demon even a little bit. So. Well, that's good. Um, but there's another thread to this loom. I don't know. I'm not good with analogies sometimes. But... Um, if it does come that we are in a bind, then as a last result, I can find demon. Are you all with us? Is everyone? No, it's no, just no, the two just... of you. It's okay. just the two of you. Do we want to even keep him around? Well, like I said, demons hardly ever lie. So you know not not everything is just evil and not evil right there's there's layers to many things much like that ogre there's I layers <laughs> so it, you know it, we could have an advantage i mean dan did say that he was cleaning up our messes yeah but that ogre I don't think courage is going to try to pull one over on us at any point. Like no. we're going to see any kind of damage and danger with him coming from a mile away. Right. Demons right. are a little more savvy and I don't, I don't know. Well, that's like, like I'm saying, if it ever comes down to it and we're in a bind, I can find the demon. We sleep with it around, you know, mm. What happens when something happens and we wake up and suddenly Dan's missing a head and 
I don't know, Bilar is off in the woods and never comes back. I mean, I don't know. Like, well, that's up for you to decide. Cause no, you... no, it's up for us to decide. All of us. Hey, everybody, come on. You stay there. Stay, Fox. Rest you Fine. Come on, come on. Listen, if there's anything I could do to, like, help you feel better about the situation, like, you I can work out just... a deal. You can start by just, no, no deals. No, no, no. You can start by just sitting still and letting us have a little conversation. Fine. I'm going to go talk to Bob. He respects me. Uh, Bob, Bob's part of the conversation, unfortunately. Um, I don't know. Just just <laughs> hang out over by, he's part of the party. So hang out over by the cart and do your singing and whatnot. And sure. All right, we're Fine. just a little surprised. Yeah, all. just, 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 just. All right, you know. All right, Liz, I will. Like, I understand it's a, a big shock. I didn't mean to talk there. If I wouldn't have said anything, you wouldn't have known. Like, listen, I just, I really, I'm a big fan of your singing. That's all it is. Like, listen, I yeah. want to be part of the band. Like, uh, I'll share whatever I want. Like, I'll, I'll share you. Listen. I'm willing to deal with you. Like I can give you information you don't already have and help you. Like, did you know that you've met Daub like already since you he fucked you over at uh, Weatherstone? Uh, no. Yeah, like just say that I can hang out with you and I'll tell you who Daub really is. I'll reach up and I'll sort of tilt Waits's horn ear back behind him and whisper into it. Making deals with demons is a bad idea. <laughs> No, but I fucking hate that Dalb. All swear. right, listen. You all have your conversation. I'll go wait on the card. Just, I just want you to know, like, I don't mean you any harm. Like, I just like your music. That's it, man. Like, ever since I saw you perform that first time in Candlekeep, like, wait, in Candlekeep? Yeah, it's been a long time, man. We. We didn't meet you until after long after Candlekeep. Well, I followed you around for a while. And then yeah. I finally decided, like, I just couldn't take it anymore. Like, I like your music a lot. So I'm like, I got to get right up in there. So, you know, I joined you. Uh, listen, Fox, like, I appreciate the fandom. I do. But understand that you've, you've just admitted to stalking us for a while mm -hmm. you also admitted to lying about who you were and if not for an accident would have continued to lie about who i'm a demon are. like and what do you expect i can't just I mean, come out and say like hey i'm a demon i like your shit let me hang out with you it doesn't work like listen i didn't even put that many of my toenails in your food when balari cooked it i oh, thought fuck, that was I shouldn't an have egg. Said that. How oh, is that an egg? I guess it could be an eggshell. It's a little crunchy. It's like a... I never leave eggshells in my food. Um, I just listen. thought it was a slip up. Another case. I should have kept well, my mouth shut. Come on. Like, you're going to be totally surprised when you figure out who the fuck Dalb is. Like, just let me hang out and sing with you. Come on, man. Not even all the time. Only when you want to. Like, I don't even want to perform with you. Just like Patience, Fox. Okay, sorry. Patience. I'll go wait on the cart. Everything's Asana, fine. Ice. All right. I'll wait on the cart. You all talk. And he goes and he hops up on the cart. Now I'm going to have Asana flying overhead, keeping eyes on him while we talk. Sure. Now, I'll give you. We would have had this difficult conversation at any given point in time. He had shown himself to us, so I, I understand his inhibitions. Well, I'll tell you all what I told him. Demons are not really in the habit of lying straight up. In fact, I've often found that it's almost like they're incapable of directly lying. So generally, they only tell half troops. So they're really good at telling half troops. So if he says he's not going to eat us or he's not going to kill us, and if he says he likes us, those are all true. What you need, what we need to figure out is what he's not saying. Right, because he's going like to do uh... something to us. It's just a question of what. Well, I mean, 
it's generally a good idea not to get in contract with a demon. Yeah, if we can keep it amicable. Yeah, see, like what I was saying, you know, that making deals with demons is a bad idea. He'll ah. say he's going to hang out with us and sing with us and all that stuff. Who's to say, uh, like, hanging out with us will mean uh, like he gets our souls forever? Yeah. He, I, I think the deal is Osborne usually is a correct. fairly contractual thing, isn't it? Not just to have. No. Um, we, I mean, um, if, deep, man, honestly. Right, I, I'm with Osborne. If if we do want to keep him around, we say, and, you know, we, we don't say anything. We're like, no, we don't need to turn our relationship into something transactional. Right. I think that I think that would be clear enough. Yeah, uh, if we, we keep things as they were, and if you feel inclined to share information with us, Grace, you hear your owl give a little screech, and you look back and you see that uh, Finnegan is like trying to slink down off the cart to kind of <laughs> towards you. <laughs> and like he kind of freezes when you look like, ah, ah, I'm sorry, I can't help myself. And he backs up onto the cart. Can't help yourself from what? I just, I'm curious. I want to know what you're all talking about. Like, I hope you all like me. Like, I really, I've really had a lot of fun hanging out with all of you. I mean, I don't mind him. I've come to terms that, you know, not everything's quite right. Not everything's quite wrong. Dan, we're going to get like a really powerful fucking artifact and then we're getting another powerful artifact and we got wait, a fucking wait. demon in tow while we're getting these fucking powerful wait, we artifacts. We have them. I mean, like. Listen, I like, know. I didn't, I didn't tell Marigal that you already have the fucking staff. You sound like a liability I don't want to be a liability. I just want to be part of the team. I think we should feed him to courage. No! Call him one. Like, you want to be part of the team, but, like, all this time, you, you keep getting all this information. You didn't tell us any of it. You keep saying you could have said this. You could have said that. That's not team play. Because I don't want to, like, listen, like, I understand that music comes from the struggle, right? I don't want to fuck up your struggle. Hey. Uh, what was your name again? Finnegan. Finnegan. Um, you say you want to be friends. Yeah. Well, one aspect of friendship is, you know, that friendship is not transactional. That's fair. So if you want to be friends, then there should be no deals. Uh, things should be done because you want to. Fine. Like, I just, okay. It's hard for me. Like, you know, like nature versus nurture, right? <laughs> like, I, Trust I, me, I come I from a, a, you know, a joint, you know, motherfuckers that, you know, like, if you want this, I give you that. Like, I just want to be, I just want to be where the music's at, man. Let's keep it. You know, I'll tell you what, sign friendly. a good face, no strings attached. I will share a piece of information with you right now that will blow your goddamn mind. And I will promise you that in the future, any times that you come across a demon in disguise, I will tell you. No, no, no. This is not, this is not the way to go forward with it. It is yeah. still transactional when you put it in that regard. Okay, I'm sorry. Like, like I don't, it's just how I am. Right? I, I don't want to be... I understand. There are things that you are brought up with that you have to struggle with on a daily basis. Trust me, I understand. But the only way to do it is to take it one moment at a time. And so right now, in this moment, choose not to offer anything up for okay. friendship. Okay. I will not. I will not. Like I said, I just want to be. I just want to be where the music's at. I will not. Just please let me hang out with you all. I'm all right with this. Have you ever heard of the phrase "wolf in sheep's clothing"? Yes. 
I get that all the time. I dig that. Listen, like, I understand that, you know, how hard the wolf can have it. Like, you know. Just because I huff and puff every once in a while doesn't mean I'm angry. Right. You're not trying to blow everyone down. You're just, you know, trying to be you. Live your best life. It's the only thing I can do. Me and Asana and this wonderful bunch I just met. And I'm not trying to fuck that up. Really, I'm not. I'm just a big fan of weights. Just weights. Well, I mean, you're all great. Like, I have grown fond of each of you. Not musically inclined. I think that's fair. The, those of you who are less musically inclined, that's not what drew me in, right? Right? But you all have your charm, and I enjoy spending time with all of you. And what would you do if we declined your welcome presence? Be sad. If we declined to welcome your presence. Be real sad. Like slink Damn. away with my shoulders and my head drooped real low and my tail tucked between my legs. And tail tucking hurts. I don't know. I don't have an answer, right? Like... It's not like I have a plan B. If Waits doesn't like me, here's what I want to do. Would you follow us anyway, like you were doing before we even knew you were around? Um, I know that you all wouldn't like that, so I no, I wouldn't do that. I can't promise that I won't set in on future shows. I mean, you can't stay six feet away for five minutes, as we've seen multiple times during this discussion. Uh, so I, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't, I can't, I don't know what to tell you. I'm trying not to be transactional, like our boy Huxley said. Like, I don't want to say, like, if you say no, I promise I'll do this, because that's what he said he doesn't want. Um, but I, just, I love the music, right? Like, I'm about the music, like... The lute, the fucking, the, the tone, the lyrics. I'm a little, you know, like, I'm still on the fence about the new dark face, but, you know, the the core of it's still all there. Face. Uh, I'm sorry. I apologize for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I, I, I have a little curiosity. Are, are there any, like, uh, commonly known demons, you know? Like, by name, you might have information about them. Sure, I mean... Well, I, I'm more asking this to you as a, the GM. Like, would I be able to, like, now that we know his name, do, like, a lore check or something like that to see if there's some notoriety to his name? Like, you can, you can like, give me a lore check, right? But the, the thing you'll need to know is, like, demons do obscure their true names. I was just about to ask that. Is it his true name? Sure. <laughs> I mean, like, we've been given, you know, false names and things like that before, but, I mean, if you're known by a false name, there's still notoriety to right. it. Give me a lore test. I'd like to see if I could assist him, because... Sure. So, Dan, take a plus one bonus for Adam. I'll lend a little do, insight do with roll what it? I've learned. Uh, yourself, Adam, or... Oh, no. No, I've just lent what I do now. Okay. So, yeah, Dan, take it with a plus one bonus. Woo. Oh wow! Uh, no, I'll, I'll take that. I don't want to push it and damage my artifacts. Uh, there's so. no good pushing it. Um, you've not heard anything on the name Finnegan. Okay. Well, in theory, that means uh, you must not do anything that generates noteworthiness in the world. So, or that's not his real name. Well, of course, course it's... many names, not just weights. Of course, it's not my real name, but also it, I haven't been here as long as some of the other demons. Like, I just came through the Proto Nexus maybe like 30, 40 years ago. I just don't know how we can trust you if we don't even know your name, but whatever. I, listen, it's it's a demon thing. Like, I can't tell you my name. Like, uh, that, yeah. do you at least have a middle name? Uh, Finnegan, Finnick. Fox. Full name. Patient, don't you? 
I wouldn't like. Is there anything I can do to help prove that I'm not trying uh, to fuck uh, you over? See, there uh, you go again. I'm, it's nature. Like, I'm sorry. Like, I don't know what to do here. Like, you were doing well. Keep at it. I, I feel like we're our conversation stalled at this point because mm -hmm. he just yeah, doesn't just, seem uh, to realize. Just... Go ahead, Jake. Not, not his fault. I mean, he wants to earn our faith. We're not giving him an opportunity to because we keep pushing the conversation along. I say we should just take a vote and see uh, whether he hangs up with us or not. I like that. Do I get a vote? No. Fuck. All right. It is what it is. Did Courage get a vote? Courage? Yeah, yeah. I, I could vote. Okay, sure. Does Bob get to vote too? <laughs> Bob, of course, gets to vote. Uh, I will vote on Bob's behalf. Yeah. Asana's happy either way. Food. All right. Or not. All right. So, um, Dan, you're the one who called for a vote. Jake, you called for a vote. <laughs> so, Jake, you conduct the vote. All right. All in favor of. Get over there. All right. Fox. All right. I'll go wait on the cart. Yeah. All right. All in favor. And of... sing loudly. I want to hear loud singing before we do this. What do you do with the drunken sailor? What do you do with the drunken sailor? What do you do oh with the God. drunken sailor? Eat out his kidneys. I say we uh, kill him, cook him, and feed him to Bob. So there's two votes to kill, cook, feed to Bob. And Courage if Courage wants a bite. Courage is like, he seems kind of cool to me, like... I've had worse friends. Like, I accidentally befriended, like, a pile of shit for, like, three days before I realized what it was. It wasn't your shit, was it? <laughs> I don't want to answer that. All right. <laughs> well, I gotta say, if you eat enough corn, things look weird. So, Courage is gonna vote, let him hang out. Go ahead, Osborne. Conduct the vote. Okay, all right. Dan, where do you stand? I'm all right with them so far. I mean, I'd like to give them a fair shake. All right. We're tied. Grace, what do you think? I think I should vote last. You guys know him better than I do. Yeah, I mean, that's fair. How about you? Like... I am not a fan of killing when not needed or oh, toenails yeah. in the food this is Listen true here. i'll tell i'll tell the rest of you what i told white if it's all right i'll go ahead and vote go, go, for, it. go for it i'll vote to keep him because if we do if it does come down to it i know a way to control him that <laughs> That is a last resort because they normally don't respond well when when the control is over. It, yeah, it makes sense. And that's not really good for friendship. Yeah, I guess not. So what do I you su think? I suppose if he's with us, then he's not free to roam. All right, I'll go ahead and say yay. So Valarian waits. I would say that letting him stay does not preclude the option of killing him later. All right, right there's a majority. Waits point vote can't swing it. So waits, how would you vote? And if it doesn't matter, I ain't gonna tell no one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, we can uh, we can keep them, but uh, if we gotta go and do Huxley's uh, emergency task, we we have that in our back pocket. Just no making deals with them. Friendship, yeah. friendship. Exactly. Because friends don't make deals with one another. They do things simply out of the kindness of their own heart without transaction. 
Uh, so when Waits kind of calls that out, Fennigan, I, just, I just spoke really loudly. I wasn't talking yeah, to him. When, when Waits says it very loudly, Fennigan catches the drift and leaps off the wagon in excitement and runs uh, around just like darting between legs, just pure joy. Ah, okay. Listen, no strings attached. Can I, I couldn't wait, talk wait. to you before because I was trying to pretend to be a fox, but now that I don't have to pretend nope, to be a fox, nope, I can share information down. with you. What? We're okay, not done okay. with the vote. Okay. Oh, God. Do I need to go back to the cart? Yeah, go back to the cart. All right, I'm sorry. Oh, God. He goes back to the cart. What are you saying, Huxley? Even that is an implication of a of a contract. Friendships. <laughs> Dress. I don't know. If he can't provide us any information, then like... Well, Why you see, he was, around? you was asking for it without asking for it. Just yeah, don't like, ask. Well, like, all I'm period. saying is, it's like, what's the benefit of having him around if he's what's not going to be useful? Don't, like, wait a day or something, at least. You see, no he more, just starts running at us. The, you, um, haven't at, you haven't asked me everything about my past life, and I haven't asked you everything about yours, right? But you're useful, and you do stuff without me having to ask to do it. Scout, right. uh, Huxley, give me a scout test. <laughs> Wait a minute, I think I have minuses to this, because my... <laughs> Yeah, minus okay. one. Up on okay. his deaf side. <laughs> Could Check I have like, a bit of a GM question for you? Sure. Nothing. Would my beast master oh, go ahead and work? Push it. Or no, or because it's could a demon. Could my, uh, beast. He's my a demon. Asana help out with that? <laughs> so it wouldn't work. Uh, well, Adam's push does the job. But anyway, Melissa, <laughs> yeah. Since he is technically a demon and not a beast, it wouldn't work. Uh, okay. You see that he's he's slunk back up into the group. <laughs> Liz, like I don't want to like I no strings attached like if you want me to be useful I will be useful I will not ask for anything in return like I am an open book to you if you want to know something just useful. ask well why must we ask you should just do I tried to tell you just a second ago and you said to go away let's listen here yeah we're not going to agree on anything Okay. So let's spend some time together. Sure. And we're done with this conversation because you know you can stay. There is oh. no, no reason to agree upon anything. Okay, cool. This is great. This is fantastic. Thank you. And uh, Waits Dalb is totally Marigold. All right, cool. I'm going to go wait on the cart. And off he goes to the cart. Cool. Oh, well, uh, crap. What, what was our what was our information? What I miss? Dalb was Marigold. The yeah. same freaking bard with Zerkstrom. Oh, that says a lot right there. The oh. same bard that apparently, according to all this different lore, has been collecting the pieces of the crown and whatnot. <sighs> Which makes yeah. sense. It explains why Dal was there. Yeah. Yeah. I, I did want to say it might be past it already. We're, we're giving some very strong mixed messages. So... He's on the cart. Finnegan's on the cart. He's, you know, back in his little, like, nest that he's kind of, like, made for himself out of some, like, tarps and shit. He's humming some of, you know, like, the Waits's, you know, earlier tunes. I'm, I'm, I'm ready to, to move on with our day. <laughs> All right, so we're just going to hang out with a, right. a, a demon in a fox outfit. How 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 is it different than the last? I don't know how long it's been. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, true. We're aware of it now. We actually mm -hmm. can do something about it. You know what? Yeah, we got we got a one up on them. So good. Yeah. No, it's cool. Like 
Yeah, let's go over that Eye of the Rose. We had a plan. Courage, we'll see you back at Weatherstone, man. He just uh, travels safe. Yeah, like, I appreciate it. Like, I'll see you back when you guys get home. Like, uh, I don't know what I can do, but I'll do... Like, listen, like... My mother taught me a lot about stonework. Like, maybe I can help, like, you know, like, cut blocks or some shit. I don't know. Yeah. place does need some work. That sounds great. That that sounds wonderful, Gurge. Yeah. You, uh, we you got to... are a very beautiful bright spot in an otherwise pain-in-the-ass day. Thanks. You're pretty great, too. Mm. And off Gurge goes. Walking towards Weatherstone. So, yeah. I mean, we can continue to talk as we travel to Eye of the Rose. We don't have to, like... Yeah. Uh, that will put us... Oh, yeah. Uh, moving through another blank spot. Yeah, I figure we can try and get to our destination. I know we're getting close to time, so... Yeah, let's go ahead and roll that shit out. Lead the way. That's our success. Dan, you going to do a scout? Yeah, give me just a moment. Oop. Oh. Two successes. Cool. Uh, it's completely uneventful. You make it there, no trouble. Um, yeah. Uh, then you're able to move through a square you've already been through. And then you make it to the Eye of the Rose. Once again, the Eye of the Rose is... Uh, a, now, this is just an image of the castle. Now, you Eye of the Rose, though, you're familiar, and Adam Huxley would be very familiar with this. It's an ancient elven fortification uh, with a city underneath the kind of craggy peak that the castle is built on. Uh, the emperor has turned, um, uh, hey there, uh, Aaron up church. Uh, if you check out defenders of Cobalt, actually, I'll give you the link. Uh, I've got all this shit on our YouTube. The free league games have been going on ours too. Uh, they've only been going on ours. Free league doesn't post any of their stuff on YouTube, so. If you want to get the back uh, back things, check us out on YouTube. That's where we got it at. Uh, anyway, so yeah, uh, you all would know it's the uh, dwarves, not dwarves, the orcs that dwell in the ancient elven city underneath with the orcish emperor living on the castle on top. That's the Eye of the Rose. Um, now, I don't know if you would know this, Huxley, but uh, Steely Dan, Osborne, Bellarian Waits would be able to point out that, like, if you go to the city park, the old cemetery, um, there's actually a mausoleum that you can go through, and it gives special access, like a hidden passage that leads directly into the library in the Eye of the Rose. Um, I'm fine with not knowing. Uh, okay. Fine with knowing. Uh, just the, depend on how I escaped. Um... You know, if, you know, you're being orc, being serving your master, you would probably have free reign of the city down below. So it probably would have been, you know, you wouldn't have been a prisoner in the castle like some of the other people that are brought to the Eye of the Rose. So, yeah, so I could have just pieced out. Yeah. Okay. The the reason why I mentioned that is because the, the orcish emperor doesn't even know about the secret passage. Yeah, let's say I don't then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If it was common knowledge, then uh, I don't think it'd be so useful. Secret. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, you all. Uh, is that your intention? Or are you just going to cut right through town to to the thing? Are you going to do it during the day? Are you going to wait till night when there might be less eyes on you? Yeah, we definitely want to keep yeah. the secret as secret as possible. Okay. Um, I'll tell you what, um, Huxley, you're very familiar with the town. Mm -hmm. Once you wait for nightfall, I want you all, I want Huxley, I want you to give me a stealth test. Uh, but I, you're going to get to take a uh, plus two bonus to it. Mm, okay. For your familiarity with the town and then also with your friends here helping you out navigate it. You want to push Ooh, that? Let's roll. Let's push it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 
Uh, you make your way to the the ancient park, the old park that's kind of been abandoned by the orcs. Um, the rest of the crew can point you towards the um, the old mausoleum. Um, so it's just like Waits, Bellari, Osborne, Steely Dan. You make your way into this old chapel, uh, kind of in the overgrown city park. Um, the inner of this chamber um, is an alcove hewn out of the mountainside. Uh, it is intact, although it's covered in vines. Um, and you do find the four stone statues inside the chamber with their mouths agape. Um, but you don't see the the hidden passage at the back of this open. Uh, geez, how did we do this again? Uh... Now, wait. I think you would probably remember the poem. I don't see Waits as a person who would forget a poem. Uh, but you were given a poem on information here. And it was the four divine kisses echo hazily, flow, speak, quiet wail the god of clay the vessel shapes the walker of night the certain it's uh the serpent escapes the fortress is entered through the yield of the tree i don't remember do we just like blow into them or something like that in this room one yeah. of them something like that you want to try that dan sure so yeah you move up to one of the statues and you blow in its mouth and it kind of like it it echoes back a, a solid note. Um, now, Waits, this would probably jog your memory enough to know that one of these statues was broken. So you had three people blowing in a statue's mouths to play the tones, but you were able to pick up that the broken statue was supposed, uh, supposed to produce a specific tone. It was yeah, broken. It wasn't doing it. Oh, that's and right. someone had to sing that tone. Yeah. Okay. I remember that now. So yeah. yeah. Waits, if you want to give me your performance. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to resolve the puzzles that we forgot we solved already. I'll push. Sure. That's yeah. a success. Holy oh, crap. God damn. That hurts. <laughs> wow. On a rough day. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the, the secret passage in the back opens up. Um. And I will kind of give it to you. Um, you move to the first passage where you had to push down the tongue of the, the face sculpted from the goddess flow. That's already been disarmed, so you can move through. Uh, the next area... Um, You like masks or something on a wall or something. Like well, that. that was the masks on the wall, and you had to reach into the mouth of the goddess flow. Okay, okay. Uh, the next one, there was the the four of them open with their mouths agape, and you would remember that you had to cover the mouth of the god whale, and you were able to move through. Um, then there was the room where there was the four statues with the clay urns on yeah. the ground in front of them, and you just had to rotate, rotate. the one for the god clay. Uh, but then it came to the room where these snakes came out of. Do you remember what you I had remember to do? we had to keep it dark, if I recall. Okay. No light. That's the secret there. If you all move through without any light, you can easily make it through without any trouble. For um, some reason, that's the only one I remember very specifically. Yeah. Eventually. <laughs> all the snakes. <laughs> yeah. Eventually taking you into the secret room in the uh, back of the library. Yeah. Um, and I think that's where we're going to wrap it for the night. Were you all making in the library? Uh, that way I can make sure I have all the proper information for you. Because I imagine now that you're here with a little more of a purpose, you're going to have more pointed questions and information that you're trying to gather up. Yeah. Nice. So with that, uh, first off, let's go through our experience questions. Um. Did you participate in the session? It's first point for everyone. Uh, did you travel through at least one hex on the game map? So yeah, everyone gets another one there. Uh, did you discover a new adventure site? Yes, you did. You all discovered the Veil of the Dead. Um, did you find any treasure or one gold or more? Uh, you did not discover any treasure while adventuring. 
Uh, you all made a little bit of cash, but I don't think that's quite the same thing. So the treasure that we found was a friendship along the way. We found <laughs> new great wonderful friend named Courage, who honestly friendship's priceless. <laughs> Just yeah, uh, you weren't in the stronghold today, so you don't get a point for building a function in the stronghold. Did anyone activate their pride? I know Ba or Osborne, you did, right? Yep. Yeah, mine has to do with uh, travel. Did you? The way. Did you use it while leading the way? Oh no, I guess it's only if you actually roll the d12. So never mind. Okay. Uh, did anyone suffer from their dark secret? Steely Dan, you did. I don't think anyone else has really came into play. Adam, maybe for you, because, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you were dancing around eating winers. Maybe. Yeah. Um, did anyone risk their life for another PC? I don't think so. Not this time. There wasn't any combat tonight, really. No. Uh, did anyone perform any extraordinary actions? Okay. It's a pretty calm session. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and yeah. as far as reputation goes, um, I would say probably no. No reputation points would really be picked up for today. Uh, so, yeah, that's our session. We'll pick up next time in the library at the Eye of the Rose, and you all can research your information. I do feel like you all kind of walked away from today's session with a plenty of new food for thought. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so let's do a little bit of plugs currently. Uh, Adam, where can people find you? Uh, well, where they can find me is uh, the Twitch channel that uh, I'm currently logged in at. That's uh, Grim and Perilous Plays. And um, no, I guess twitch.tv slash grim and perilous plays, all one word. But uh, yeah, every Sunday I, I play a little Hollow Knight because I'm very excited about the sequel coming out. Um, and on Tuesdays I play uh, Borderlands with like a total of four of the people from Grim and Perilous Studios, so nice. uh, inclu including Jen. Um, and Every now and then we'll we'll stream some role playing games, which we should be ramping up here um, within the next couple of months. So, uh, if you could give us a follow, we'd appreciate it, and come hang out when I play video games or when we play uh, role playing games. That'd be great. There we go. Uh, let's see, Dan and Jake, you all get lumped in with me, so we'll come back to defenders. Jeff, Jen, not Jen, Jeff, Melissa, what a lot of gaggers got going. Uh. Let's see. Uh, so, yeah, twitch.tv slash lollygaggers. You can find that's where we normally stream. Uh, every other Monday, we play Alien. And then starting next Friday, uh, we're going to be beginning a Delta Green campaign. So you can catch that out. And then also, we run a game on the Freely Publishing channel. So on the opposite Mondays from Alien, including this coming Monday, mm -hmm. uh, we, uh, we run uh, Things from the Flood. So you can catch uh, some of the people on the screen uh, playing as... Uh, as emo teenagers in the nineties in a desert, <laughs> desert Twin Peaks like town. So mm -hmm. lots of fun. There we go. Uh, Jen, where can people find you? Hi, uh, hey everybody. Uh, you can find me on my channel, Pixel Prowler, where we do play video games primarily. Maybe sometime in the future, I will be running a role playing game here or there, Ooh. but we'll see. Very cool. Uh, and yeah, uh, Dan, Jake, and I, we are rounding out the Defenders Cobalt crew here. Um, yeah, usually you can find us Wednesdays, twitch.tv slash Defenders of Cobalt for either Spectaculars or we're running Rime of the Frostmaiden, but we're using the DCC-based system, Weird Frontiers. Uh, also, you can catch us Fridays on Defenders of Cobalt, where we're either rocking out a basic fantasy role-playing game or actually starting, um, is it this coming Friday? Uh, we're going to be starting Alien. We're going to be running Chariot of the Gods. So that'll be exciting. That. Yeah. Uh, Saturdays, you can either find us you know, right here in this time slot, Free League Publishing for some Forbidden Lands, or the opposing Saturdays, 9 p.m. Central, we run stuff on Goodman Games Official, DCC-type stuff. Yeah. Um, what else do we got? You can catch Jeff and I tonight on all the RPGs as we play some Tales from the Loop. Uh, 
Jeff is playing the Valley Girl, and I am playing the Valley Girl's little sister. Yeah, of course we are. Come on. I don't. So I don't know why she talks like that. We're from Oregon. Like, <laughs> <laughs> you're from Oregon. I was born, you know, elsewhere because I'm older, and our family was so much better before you arrived. But whatever. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and then also, uh, what else? You can catch Jeff and I this Thursday on Devil Run, Devil's Run. I don't know the Twitch channel, but we're going to be checking out some stuff using Suede system. Uh, well, shit, I forgot. Sunday, Sunday on, on Steam, Steel, and Murder, Jeff and I are playing some Shadow Run. So, yeah, I don't know. That's what we got. Thanks for watching, everyone. Um, <laughs> We're all over the fucking place. It's great. Uh, I'm going to sign us off. So until we see you again, start fires, do drugs, and wash your fucking hands. Deuces. Hi. Hi. i got to find out where OBS is now. Keep waving. Keep waving. Keep waving. Keep waving.